Okay, nice. So today we are going to talk about scholarships. Uh, specifically today, our goal is to talk to you about how to apply for local scholarships. And I'll also explain what your merit-based scholarships and national scholarships might look like. I'm Mrs. Anzalone. I work in the College and Career Center. And I know you're all familiar with Ms. Bourne, the post-secondary counselor. So we are here to answer your questions today. And I may actually try to um, ask you to pose questions when I prompt you because sometimes I have trouble seeing the chat when I share my screen. And Ms. Bourne, can you see the chat? Okay, great. Okay, so I have data from about two classes ago that the class of 2019 had earned over $14 million in scholarship money. And some of that aid is merit-based that came automatically when they applied to a school and some was local and athletic, um, but it is very possible to earn more money than you might think is possible. So this year for a in-state public school, the average tuition is 11,000, just over that. And out of state, some of you might be interested in going out of state is about 26,000. And if you are applying to a more a private school, it's, it's just over 40,000. And so sometimes we kind of come to the point where we wonder how will we pay for school? And I know that it is now a graduation requirement that you complete the FAFSA. And I know Ms. Bourne has sent out emails that tell you if you need assistance filling out the FAFSA to please let her know and we will connect you with people that can help you. Um, hopefully you have completed the FAFSA. And when you've applied to a college, you indicated the colleges you applied to on the FAFSA. So sometimes you'll be receiving your FAFSA package from a college when you've applied. Sometimes it comes a little bit later, um, but that is not necessarily scholarship money that those are loans. So today we're just talking about actual scholarship money that you don't have to pay back. Scholarships come in a large variety of ways. Um, you can get them for physical attributes like being tall, believe it or not, you can get them for activities sometimes our heritage, our culture, our academics, there is a variety of reasons. So if you ever have a question, feel free to email me and I can actually search and say, oh, I actually do have some scholarships that might fit, fit you and be a good fit for you to apply for. So there's many opportunities for scholarships. Um, and I'm actually gonna start talking about college scholarships. When you apply to a college, you may get accepted and they have told you, you can now apply for scholarships specifically through our college. Sometimes you don't even have to be accepted yet and you can apply for a scholarship specifically through a college. Um, but if you are applying for a college scholarship, for example, like from Marquette, you have to use it at Marquette. Okay, so just to make that clear. National scholarships just mean what it says, that probably anybody in the United States can apply for them. So of course that application pool is so big, of course you should take the risk and apply, but possibly it, it might be less of a chance of winning. Um, a local scholarship has better chances of you possibly winning because we have less people applying and that's what I'm talking about today. And then speak with a guardian or a parent because they might have an employer scholarship sometimes. Um, for example, the Illinois State Police offers a scholarship through the Illinois Sheriff Association or, uh, you know, Pfizer has a scholarship. I mean, it's really, you don't know unless you ask. So be sure you ask a parent or guardian if their employer has a scholarship. So before I continue, I just wanted to show you what I was talking about with scholarships. So let's pretend that you had been interested in applying to Marquette. And it says here that you can apply for a scholarship, which means you didn't have to be accepted yet. So you can 
create a login and you can actually start applying to win money. Um, and then probably around April, you'll sit down and see how much money did I win? How much money did I earn at FAFSA that I might have to pay back? But you'll see um, if you can afford to attend a school. Um, so Marquette means though that you're using that money at Marquette. Another school that I really like to talk about is Harper because it has so many opportunities. Um, and maybe you are not in Harper Promise and that's okay because sometimes they offer scholarships that are sometimes even better than Harper Promise. They come with fees to pay for your books and they the scholarship covers those fees. Um, so there is no scholarship too big or too small. I would always search the college you've applied to and see if they have scholarships that you can also apply to win. And then uh, Ms. Bourne has a collection of websites that are what we believe are credible to apply for a national scholarship. So um, on this slide here, and I'll tell you where you can locate this presentation after today, but you can click and go to FastWeb. Um, and this would be a way to find more national scholarships. Uh, and you might one night be bored or set time aside over winter break and say, I'll just make this scholarship day. And you can search for national scholarships. Um, and of course, I don't post these ones in Naviance, but if you have a question about one, you can email me. Even if your question is, is the scholarship credible? I'll try my best to help you determine if you should apply for it. But today we're going to talk more in depth about our local scholarships. So actually, before I show it to you, um, some of you are familiar that Ms. Bourne has a great college resources page. And if you've been there through our District 214 website at Prospect and you've gone to college resources, and then you'll click on financial aid information, you can find the local scholarship list. And I personally like using this list because I update it. So I know that what I've put on the spreadsheet, it's a legitimate scholarship. Um, it might be a little bit easier to read what the terms of the scholarship are and how to apply. Um, another way you might hear a counselor say you can search for scholarships on Naviance, you definitely can. Um, some of you, I'm pretending to be a student, so it says demo and alone, <laughs> but if you go to Naviance, and I believe if you go to, um, colleges, and you scroll to scholarships and money, you can search the scholarship list in Naviance. But I sometimes like using the spreadsheet because I've arranged it already to show you in order of deadline when a scholarship is due. And not every scholarship will apply to you, so you may need to take some time to read through the description. But one scholarship that I really like to talk about is the A. Franklin Pilchard Scholarship. It's at number 13 on our list. And you must be a resident of Illinois, but you must want to attend a college in Illinois. And you can receive up to $8,000 per school year. So that is a good scholarship. Um, if you ever have questions about a scholarship and they provide an email, I put the email address here. You're going to read in the description. I've linked the PDF of the application and you can just click it open and on your iPad in Notability, you can fill it out. So you can read through your requirements and then you can fill this out on Notability. And if you go back in the right hand side in the website part, they have a Google form and you would just open up this Google form. And at the very bottom, you would add that file that you had just completed in Notability and you would literally hit submit and you've applied for a scholarship. So sometimes um, it's not as hard as you think and you just need to set aside a little time. 
I also wanted to point out that some scholarships are still on paper and we are trying so hard to let these organizations know it would be a little easier electronically, but it's free money. And if they still wanna do it on paper, that's okay. <laughs> um, but so many seniors at Prospect always tell me they are thinking of studying chemistry or engineering. Um, so if you look at number 21, the Illinois Chemical Education Foundation has a scholarship uh, for students who are ach high achieving and in extracurricular activities. Um, but I did link the PDF here because it is technically a paper scholarship. So if you had been in school in person with me, you'd walk into the College and Career Center and I'd literally hand you this piece of paper. And so you can just open this up and read through the directions, but it does say they want you to put everything in an envelope and mail it through the US Postal Service by February 19th. They want it postmarked that day. So let's pretend that you're ready to apply for a scholarship on paper. I have another example here too. Um, this is a, an example of a paper scholarship too. And I haven't updated Gina G and Cola yet. They didn't send me their updated scholarship yet, um, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's pretend you are applying to those old fashioned paper scholarships. You probably have to submit a transcript with your application. If the word official appears before transcript, it does need to be official, so you would order it from parchment. But when you order it from parchment, you would send it to your address at your house where you live, but don't open it up. You would leave it in the sealed envelope and then put it in your large envelope with that paper application. Um, if a scholarship is on paper, but it doesn't say official transcript, it's more than likely okay that you just download the PDF of your transcript from Infinite Campus. And you can email me or Ms. Bourne and we can help you if you can't figure out like how to manipulate Infinite Campus, we can help you. Um, and then obviously you would, you would see your unofficial transcript, but you would just print it out and put it in the envelope with your paper application. And so I've just reviewed the rules of how you would apply for your, your official transcript. And when you receive it, don't open it up, just put it in the envelope with your application. And then also we have applications that require a letter of recommendation. So in the past, scholarship committees are very familiar that students are probably going to ask for their letter of rec from a teacher who already wrote one for college. So let's pretend you had already asked Mr. Rathy to write you a letter of rec when you applied to Boston University, I don't know, wherever you're applying. Well, he already has your letter and it's already written. It is perfectly fine if you email him and say, Mr. Rathy, could you please um, send my letter of recommendation to this scholarship. Most of the scholarships that are digital accept a letter of rec from a teacher through email. So Mr. Rathy could just email it straight to the scholarship committee. The, the kind of hiccup is if your scholarship is through paper, somehow that committee needs your letter of recommendation. And if the scholarship asks you to mail everything in one envelope, you would have to politely ask Mr. Rathy to email or to mail in the US Postal Service your letter of rec to your house. And when you receive it, don't open it up, put it in your application envelope. Um, and then when you send your whole application to the committee, they get Mr. Rathy's letter. Um, and if you have questions about that process, you can email me or Ms. Bourne and we'll help you. Um, and I, I wanted to just bring one thing up back to parchment. Um, if you're applying for a scholarship that's due in February and they need a official transcript, then I would probably wait to order it till after first semester when your grades are posted on that transcript. Um, because if you send it now, they won't see your first semester grades. 
Um, and Ms. Bourne, do you have anything to add about that? I just... Um, just that I'll be sending an email out to all seniors to tell you a little bit about ordering any of those what we call mid-year transcripts, uh, transcripts that do have those first semester grades on them because not only scholarships, but some of your colleges, if you haven't received a um, uh, admission decision yet, they may want to see those first semester grades. So watch your email about the probably next week is when that email will go out. Thank you, Ms. Bourne. So when you're thinking about scholarships, um, some of you have applied to college and you're like, good, that's done. And you're waiting for a response, or maybe you do know. Um, now you can focus on how can I basically get free money? And you want to get as much as you can. So apply for as many scholarships as you qualify for. Um, and if you don't know, like, do I qualify for this? Email me and I'll help you. Pay attention to the deadlines for scholarships because one hiccup is they're all different and all of the requirements for scholarships are different. So some scholarships might need a official transcript, some might not. And you just need to read the fine print of every scholarship. So when you do send it in, you know that you did it correctly. Um, also pay attention to the conditions of your award. So like that A. Franklin Pilchard scholarship, it does say you need to attend college in Illinois. Um, and we did have a prospect student from last year from the class of 2020, and he did win the A. Franklin Pilchard. Um, but believe it or not, he actually did turn it down. He decided to go out of state, so he couldn't accept the scholarship. Um, number four, watch for scholarship scams. So if a scholarship company is asking for money or a credit card number, um, I would not enter those types of scholarships. Um, they are probably going to give you false hope. Um, I also wouldn't necessarily call social media scholarships a scam, but they're asking you to do free marketing. So like there was a Taco Bell scholarship. It was like, take a picture of yourself with your favorite Taco Bell and hashtag Taco Bell and you're entered in the scholarship. Well, I mean, it takes you five minutes to do it, but I don't know if necessarily you're gonna win. That company is kind of using students to market for them for free. Um, also, if you do receive a scholarship, write the organization a thank you note. Um, and I wanted to actually go back to our scholarship spreadsheet to point out a couple of scholarships that I know we had prospect students win last year. Um, when you're at the spreadsheet, the first sheet is our available scholarships. And if you scroll down, the scholarships that I've highlighted in red, they're just not updated yet. But sometimes I actually don't receive updated applications until after first semester. So some of the scholarships I'd really like you to keep your eyes out for are the District 25 scholarships. So if you had gone to middle school in District 25, they want you to apply to win money. Um, another one are our District 214 Education Foundation scholarships. And I know they're in red right now, but they should be updated by February. And these are only open to District 214. And also sometimes specific to a school. So we had scholarships last year that only like 10 prospect seniors applied to win. And so your opportunity to win is bigger because you have less people applying. Um, and these I think are really meaningful. If you want a scholarship from the district you attend, that's something to be really proud of. Um, and I will post on Instagram, Schoology, I will email you, you will know when these scholarships open up. And then some of you might know, we have a great teacher parent council at Prospect. Um, they are so excited to have their scholarships each year. Um, and these are only for prospect seniors. So that team usually will update their scholarships by February also. And we are working on hopefully having those be digital submissions as well. Um, and I will advertise the 
academic and advantage awards, those prospect high school teacher parent council scholarships, um, those are also just something I would be really proud to win because your community picked you, like the people who know prospect and what we're all about. Um, so I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen um, because I wanted to ask if anybody had questions. And I can also see the chat now too. So if you wanted to put a question in the chat, feel free. If you are confident, feel free to unmute yourself and just ask. I know it's a lot of information to learn <laughs> so quickly too. So you never have to um, feel like you can't email me. And I'm going to put my email in our chat today too. We, our question is, should we wait for the scholarships in red and focus on the yellow scholarships for now? Um, so I think what Lauren means is, should we focus on the ones that are available right now? I would, I would spend a day maybe over break or maybe we have that Monday off in January um, and be like, maybe I'll make myself a two hour window of scholarship time. And, and maybe you can see the scholarships that are available now and knock out a few, you know, apply for one or two and get your confidence up that you you applied. Um, and as I update the scholarships and move them from the red up into the yellow, I like how Lauren called it that, then that's something else you can add to your list. Um, however, it's never a bad idea that you scroll through the red ones and you see, wow, when that one is updated, I should apply for that. So keep your eyes peeled then for when it gets updated. That was a great question though. And that's kind of the reason why we put them in red. Um, in, in years ago, we used to just add them when we got the current one for this year. And then what it required for all of you is to just really constantly be checking back, you know, are there any new scholarships? And so this is a way for you to see the entire list of scholarships that we typically offer in a, in a year. They may not be, you know, quite available yet, but you like Miss Ann Lone said, you can look ahead, especially I find um, winter break is a big time where seniors have a little extra time and, and start kind of, they're done with their college applications and they start thinking about like, I need to apply to some of these scholarships. So it's a way for you to organize yourself, look ahead and say, gee, some of those ones in, that are shaded and red, not available yet, but I'm gonna mark my calendar to look again in February because that's when they typically come in. Or, And of course, um, I always will put information on Schoology because that's our school um, website, I like to call it, or that's our source of information. But if you have Instagram or Twitter, you can follow us. I put our handle there. Um, just because sometimes like today, you may have heard about this session through the posting and then you went to Schoology and found the link. Um, and the more times you see us, the better because because I don't want you to miss a scholarship either. So I'll try my best to always kind of remind people, especially about those District 214 and the prospect ones. There's a question, there's a question about where is the Google Doc? And, and actually it's in a couple places. So maybe, let me see if I can share really quickly. Um, couple places you can see it. If you guys um, are familiar with the college application guide on the financial aid and scholarships page, you will find under scholarships, um, the, oh gosh, do I not have it on here? Let's see. I think you have it through the financial aid web page. Okay. So Maybe I should put it on the um, on the guide too. But if you go under students and college resources on the financial aid information page, um, actually I'll point out here too, there's the list, but also 
Ms. Anzalone's presentation is here as well. So if you want to see what she went over today, you will find that here. But this is the, lo the local scholarship list that she was referring to. And that was a great question because um, you're getting so many emails and so many different facets to check every day. But if you favorite the spreadsheet or the website too, so you know, always know where that website is and click on the spreadsheet, you, you'll you always like see it maybe at a at your internet bar and be like, oh, maybe I'll go check and see if there's any scholarships that popped up. You never yes. know. A great, there is a great question about will, be, will we be hosting another one of these? Um, definitely, Ms. Anzalone's doing another one, but just so you know, it's basically the same thing. So for all of you, um, wouldn't be as useful, but please pass on the word to your friends if they're interested in um, finding out this information today. And sometimes I didn't find a scholarship, but you did. And if you want to email me and say, I found this scholarship, is this is this a real one? Can I apply for it? Feel free to let me know and I can check into it too. Somebody asked, do you need to email somebody for the Zoom link for Thursday? I posted it on Schoology this morning and I'll post it again too. So you'll click on the Zoom link for the December 10th scholarship session. And as always, if, if you have questions on whether it's scholarships or just anything related to college, um, feel free to email me, Ms. Anzalone. I'm going to put um, my email in there as well. We have about one minute left um, before our session ends today. So if anybody has a last minute question, feel free to ask. And if everybody is feeling comfortable, then um, we'll end our session and feel free to email Ms. Bourne or me um, if you ever have a question that comes up. And I'm so happy you attended. Um, thank you so much.